appreciate Syrian girl getting up early. This is the middle of the night over in uh, over in Australia uh, to come on with us again. Her family was in the uh, ruling party there, got run out by the Assads. So even though they don't like Assad and, or his son, uh, she for about a year and a half has given us incredible intel that's all turned out to be absolutely true. And since then, she's gone public with her full name, but on national Australian television, we'll just call her Syrian girl. Uh, here today with us. And Syrian girl, I appreciate you holding while I went to that caller. He was very important. You've got the floor, the latest developments in Syria, the mass murder, but also the Al-Qaeda brigades killing Christians and uh, Coptic Muslims and others, or Coptic Christians and Alawites uh, in other areas. Uh, what is happening and, and what's the real state of the ongoing uh, stalemate war uh, in Syria right now? Hi, Alex. Thanks for having me. Uh, you could, you're welcome to call me Mimi al Laham if you like. It's okay. It's quite widespread. Okay, fantastic. Um, great. Uh, well, you know, the media has been sort of hyping up that there's this big split between the so-called moderate rebels, as they call them, and Al-Qaeda, and they hyped up an assassination of one of the FSA insurgents and Al-Qaeda. Uh, which is Jabhat al-Nusra, is the name it's going by in Syria. So, but in reality, you know, they choose their words very carefully because they say moderate rebels, they don't say secular rebels. And that's because there are no, no secular rebels. Secular rebels are in a very tiny minority. And, you know, moderate relative to what? Like, relative to Al-Qaeda? And in The Economist, um, you might bring up the... Uh, table that was shown of the types of groups and the names of the groups that are part of the rebels. This includes Ansar al-Islam, which is an Islamist group, and then you have Liwa al-Tawheed, which are under the umbrella of the moderate non-Al-Qaeda rebels, but that's the same group that was responsible for strapping a bomb to a prisoner uh, last year and trying to get him to drive through a checkpoint and become an unwilling suicide bomber. So this is the groups that the, U the U.S. government are labeling as moderate groups. And then you have, you know, Farouk Battalion and Sawar al-Sham, and it just, it's a long list of um, maybe not Al-Qaeda level uh, insane, insanity, but certainly uh, religious uh, groups. And in Syria, religious-based political parties aren't allowed. And there's a reason for that, because we have many religious groups. And when you have religious parties, everybody will start to vote for their own religious party. And then you have something that's exactly like Lebanon, where their society is so fractured and split, and they've had multiple civil wars. Sure, there's a separation of church and state. You don't have religious parties. We don't have that here either. I mean, you can go have one, but once they get in government, it can't be a, a, a religious-based government. And I think that's really sensible. You know, religion, at home, there's nothing wrong or inherently evil about any of the religions, but religion in politics just creates many, many problems. And, you know, just because they're moderate compared to Al-Qaeda doesn't mean they're not Islamic, doesn't mean that they don't um, steal from people, doesn't mean that they don't kick people out of their homes, doesn't mean that... Doesn't mean they're, they're not, not constantly Islamic. killing each other. So let me ask you this question. What is the current real state of the battlefield situation from your sources inside Syria right now? Well, if things carry on as they are and the rebels or insurgents aren't given any weapons, then the army has a sure victory. The fact that Qusayr fell in Homs, is, um, that is kind of like the Stalingrad of Syria because it, Homs, the city Homs, has all the roads to all the major cities around Syria. So if you, it's a control point. So now that Syrian uh, military controls that control point, um, everything else will follow through. But unfortunately, you know, you have people like Carly Levine meeting up with uh, Salim Idris and talking about not caring the, about the consequences, but definitely wanting to give weapons. And the thing is, um, what I'd also like to mention is that, you know, this rivalry is hyped up in the media about uh, between the FSA and the Al-Qaeda groups. But in fact, you know, there was an article written by Andrew McCarthy, which highlights the fact that the split between Al-Qaeda and the FSA is not so deep. Because um, in an Al Jazeera report, Colonel Abdul Rahman, he's calling himself a colonel, which is a member of the rebels Supreme Milita Military Council, said that Al-Qaeda was welcome in Syria 
to help fight the regime. But even the CFR admits about 60% of the fighters are jihadis out of Saudi Arabia who affiliate with Al-Qaeda. They even have uh, Al-Qaeda uniforms. They wave Al-Qaeda flags. I've seen in Egypt the people throwing the secular folks off buildings are waving Al-Qaeda flags. I mean, this is Al-Qaeda. It's, you know, it's all out in the open. They haven't really... Um you know, what manner of treason is it to welcome Al-Qaeda or foreigners into your land to kill your people? The only group that's fighting Al-Qaeda in Syria right now is the Syrian army. The FSA are not fighting Al-Qaeda. They are weak compared to Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda is the biggest fighting group fighting the Syrian army in Syria. And, you know, around the same time, and this is very important, Al Jazeera also reported two weeks ago uh, they interviewed a leader in Al-Qaeda in Syria, and he said that the FSA was actually selling them weapons. So, of course, uh, when the U.S. is going to give these rebels weapons, it's going to end up in the hands of Al-Qaeda. And even now, they've admitted recently that um, in, in Aspen Security Forum, that they're actually giving them a wage of $150 a month. Um, this came out a few days ago. And if you check my YouTube channel, I also point out that I caught um, one guy that was interviewed by Channel 4 News in the UK, an Al-Qaeda guy, saying that he also receives $150 a month. So you wonder if it's coming from the same distributor. And when the EU lifted an, ar an oil embargo in Syria, um, in the northern part of Syria, um, where Al-Raqqa, Actually, the group that controls Raqqa and controls the oil flow is Al-Qaeda. That's right. So They've got control of that oil pipeline. Stay there. Well, that's our government, as usual, funding Al-Qaeda while using them to take all of our liberties away. So next time the TSA wants to stick their hands down your pants, say, how dare you? Your government works for Al-Qaeda. I had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound when I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com. We've got Syrian girl joining us with a report on what's happening uh, over there from all her sources. It's proven very accurate. Now you see her on Australian and international television, uh, you know, breaking it down. Uh, but uh, looking at this, you know, the, the most important news you've covered in the last month or two since we had you on InfoWars Nightly News or on the Daily Radio Show, what is most important for people to know about what's happening? We had Israel hit Syria and blow up some of their defensive missiles. The Russians... Uh, reportedly lost people that were there and they're now threatening Israel. I mean, we see Israel helping uh, gang up to support handing over that area uh, to the radical Islamists because Israel's allied like the U.S. with Saudi Arabia. I mean, how is Israel going to have that fly aiding Al-Qaeda? Well, with Israel, you know, the whole agenda of Israel is to cut Syria up because um, you know, under Zionism, they want to control everything from the Nile to the Euphrates. So they see Syria and Iran as, you know, a rival or a threat to their ideology. Or if Syria wants the occupied land back, which is the Golan Heights, which Israel currently occupies, that's a problem for Israel. So what's the best idea? Divide and conquer. And the whole agenda, even in, in 2006, Gondolisa Rice outlined the project for a new, new Middle East. And it showed that Iran and Iraq and Syria were divided, and Syria and Iraq in particular were divided into threes, a south um, in Iraq, so north, south, uh, and middle, north being the Kurdish part. And in Syria, they wanted an, to create an Alawite and Christian coast separate to everything else. And, you know, Al-Qaeda's ideology is Wahhabism. And some of these people in Wahhabism feel that they cannot tolerate any other religion in the, in the area that they are in. 
And they also think that if there's a majority of Muslims anywhere, then that land belongs to them. Like Pakistanis who are Wahhabi are coming to Syria and saying, this is our land, Syrians out. Because if they, these Syrians aren't, you know, Wahhabis, then they've got to go. They're, you can kill them to get them out. Yeah, so they're, they're really a colonialist. That's exactly what it is. You know, it's it's a, it's uh, exploiting religion to. Uh, it's Muslim. To it's Muslim colonists, radical Muslim colonists who colonize other peaceful Muslim nations, and that's why the globalists are funding them because they want to spread radical Islam worldwide as a tool of destabilization. Unbelievable. It's like a reverse crusade, you know, in, in, so to speak. So, like, as a Muslim, it doesn't matter to me my syrian friend is a christian because that we're both syrian you know we grow we're neighbors we grew up in the same land we've got the same kind of uh mentality and the same culture so of course i'm gonna be uh caring about what happens to my syrian compatriots more so than you know some foreigner coming to my land to to kill them and again that's so the key uh, even though you're a sunni you're not a wahhabist you're not supporting what's happening to Syria because it's a foreign invasion. And that's why the globalist fun radical Wahhabi Islam is that it is a way to uh, uh, basically attack nation states. It's another international arm they use. Wahhabism never existed in Syria before this time. So it goes to show you how this ideology has been exported into Syria. And it doesn't really mesh with our society. I mean, we've been like this secular for forever since we began 7,000, 10,000 years ago, so. Well, I tell you, it is a real crime against humanity. What do you think of the Peace Prize winner Obama funding Al-Qaeda to come in and mass murder men, men, women, and children? What do you want to say to the American people? I want to say that um, I, I don't like to interfere with people's internal affairs. I respect the American people. I think they're great, great people, but unfortunately, the government is way out of line. They've been attacking countries uh, all over the place. They've been supporting dictatorships. They've been supporting apartheid. And I think Obama is a traitor to his people and to his country. Yeah, but he's really not an American, so he can't be a traitor. But if he was an American, he would be a traitor. Stay there. Back in 60 seconds. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. A Syrian girl who for a year and a half has been giving us amazingly accurate reporting uh, joins us again from Australia. Uh, and uh, in a way has almost become a spokesman for the Syrian people that are under siege. Uh, now going from the internet speaking out to being on a national and international television shows in Australia, uh, Europe, you name it. Another testament to taking action. Uh, so Syrian girl continuing here with any other uh, important points to pass along to people. Uh, you know, first we heard Obama was going to send in even heavier arms, but then Congress said, hey, we vote, don't do that. Because they realized politically, because we're exposing, you're exposing the fact that it's Al-Qaeda, they're going to get in trouble when Al-Qaeda uses those heat-seeking missiles and stuff to shoot down Western aircraft. Or maybe they think we're so dumb that it'll become treason to not support Al-Qaeda and the police will come arrest us if we don't support Al-Qaeda in America. I mean, I mean, maybe we're that evil. I don't know. You know, George Orwell said uh, that in, in a place, when a police state, the police state thinks it can just switch the flags of the enemy and, and nobody's supposed to notice. And if you notice, you're a traitor, basically. But, um, you know, when, when Congress says it's worried about weapons getting into the wrong hands, they don't just mean Al-Qaeda. They actually really mean the Syrian army, which is quite possible if they kill the rebels that they will capture the weapons. And, you know, let's say that there might be very real turf rivalries between the FSA and Al-Qaeda. But even if these groups start fighting each other, Al-Qaeda will be easily, because they're stronger now, be able to kill these rebel groups and capture these heavier weapons. So, you know, it's um, they're going to be used against capital cities now. The only things that haven't been really destroyed and smashed are the capital cities. And there will be the absolute decimation of Syria. But that's OK for the uh, globalist agenda to take place. They don't really care about our lives. But, you know, um, 
the the thing is that they they want to con keep things under control because they can't have any group become so powerful that uh, they start to have a mind of their own. And Al Qaeda is part of that because even though the heads of Al Qaeda might be controlled by the CIA, the low level ones have no idea of this. You know, they think that they're fighting America. You know, but the most comical thing, this my last point would be the most comical thing was the suggestion by the insurgents and by um, David Cameron's government that the weapons can go on loan and will be returned later oh. after the Syrian government is defeated. And this was said in, in British Parliament as like a, you know, one of the things that could happen to, to prevent groups getting too powerful. So. Wow, well, I know it's painful for you having family there to watch all this going on. But I mean, how long can it go? It's what, two and a half years now? How long can this crime go on? Now, now Obama's talking about stalemate being a victory, which I guess means Al-Qaeda takes over part of the country and they break it up. That's ex I think that was the agenda from the beginning, in fact. And as I said, you know, in 2006, Gondolese Rice's project for a new Middle East showed exactly the map that they wanted to draw up. And that is a divided Syria. And, um, you know, I'd rather die than see that happen. Uh, and, you know, people are dying. So what can I say? Like half of my family have escaped the country. Um, I've still got half the family there. So... Hopefully, we'll come back and to a unified country and rebuild it. That's that's what we're hoping for. I think it's time to form a militia and just mash everybody and, and go in there and take out Al Qaeda. I mean, that's it's the already th happened. There's now a national defense force militia that's formed alongside the army. So what happens is the army advances and the militia holds, and the militia is made up of people from the area that live there and absolutely but it's time work. for human wave attacks people just got to get geared up and go in there and take al-qaeda out <laughs>we saw some of her YouTube videos speaking out. We already confirmed who she was. People said, oh, that's not a real person from Syria saying all this stuff. But now she's gone public in the last six months and been on national television around the world and is who she says she is. She has a lot of contacts in Syria. Her family was from the old uh, ruling party there in Syria. They don't like the Assads. They left, most of them, or half of them. She's in Australia, but still she's against what's happening there because it's Al-Qaeda coming in, engaging in mass murder, and our so-called government is running it. Now, again, this is important not just to do the right thing and get out of Syria. The whole narrative of we're taking your rights because of Muslim extremists, ladies and gentlemen, Al-Qaeda is out of Saudi Arabia. Our government is deep in bed with them. They help create Al-Qaeda. The British intelligence helped create the Wahhabist. This is on record. And so when I go to the TSA and they ask me if I'm a terrorist or whatever, I just start saying, you know our government ships the drugs in. You know our government runs Al-Qaeda. And they'll go, yeah, we know. Go on through. Uh, or, you know, at the border they go, in, in customs when I flew back from England, do you have any drugs on you? And I go, no, I don't use drugs, and I don't have any criminal record. You know that. You just swipe my passport. You know the government ships the drugs in. And they go, yeah, we know. Get on through. I mean, it's just like stop going along with this whole facade that we're all suspects. And, oh, it's not al-Qaeda now. It's the gun owners and the veterans. And, again, when I say 9-11 is an inside job, criminal elements in our government, bare minimum, allowed what happened to happen. And that's been confirmed. But they're like, how dare you traitors say that? It's a fact. Now, I wanted to get her on just for any closing comments. Uh, you can follow her at, uh, well, I'll let her give out the best websites, best YouTubes, best uh, Facebooks for people in closing. But I remember like a year ago, the Syrian army forced back the 60-something thousand Al-Qaeda forces in one area back into Turkey. And Turkey for three days opened up with U.S.-made howitzer cannons killing them. I mean, that's the type of evil. Uh, that is going on, and Israel's been bombing them, and people say, hey, you're being anti-Israel. What, anti-Israel? I'd be against Al-Qaeda attacking Israel. If our government was shipping Al-Qaeda into Israel to attack them, I'd be, they were shipping them against South Africa. They were shipping them in against Russia, which they are. Uh, it's so evil. It's so evil. 
Uh, so, Syrian Girl, give out your uh, different uh, websites and stuff for people and, and any other closing comments. Thanks a lot. Um, I wanted to plug uh, the Syrian Electronic Army Twitter account. It's at official underscore C12 because they've been telling me that they've actually found something interesting uh, going through the White House emails, which is that the White House openly communicates with Facebook. And, you know, that I think that is interesting under the prison context. And they're always exposing um, the NSA and uh, applications on your telephone that spy on you, such as Viber um, and Facebook as well. So I would plug the official C12. Um, that's the Syrian Electronic Army Twitter. And I guess uh, my own YouTube account is Syrian Girl Partisan, all one word. And I, I want to thank you a lot for this interview. Um, if I can plug anything else, it would be my Twitter account, Partisan Girl, and my Facebook account, Partisan Girl, as well. And um, thanks a lot for everything you're doing and for fighting for the truth. Well, we are against Al-Qaeda here. We're very un-American, and uh, we tend to not like to attack innocent countries and that are murdering Christians and others in mass. We're extremists here on the air. And, you know, we're extremists. We're informed. We try to study issues. And I don't think Assad's a good guy just like you don't. But in the final equation, what's happening is, I'd say, 100 times worse. Uh, and it's meant to wreck the whole region and just bring in uh, incredible tyranny. And uh, I, I forgot that the uh, Syrian... Um, uh, electronic army has actually hacked into government channels, uh, broken a lot of stuff. And, and is that Syrians, or, or have you heard, or is that Russians going as the Syrian Free Army, or does, or, or does, uh, or, or the Syrian uh, Electronic Army? Excuse me. I, I, I mean, is that group? Uh, I mean, I mean, does, does the Syrian government sure. have ha have hackers that good? They're not even government hackers. They're just teenage boys. So, and they're inside Syria, and I can vouch for that. Well, tell us about that group briefly. Um, they're just Syrian patriots who kind of like, they're very young, they're hackers basically, and they, they, they see that the media is manipulating the truth. And that's how the group began to, to begin with, is just to fight the media. And it, it might have grown slightly beyond that, but their number one priority is just to hijack different media groups uh, like routers and CNN, hijack their Twitter accounts, their Facebooks, and put out like real media. And I believe they also put out InfoWars reports. So um, it's kind of, uh, uh, it's called cultural jamming, what they're really doing. And I want to agree with you, the Syrian government is corrupt, like many governments are, but you know, in, in, they were draconian and people had a reason to be pissed off with the government. And unfortunately though, foreign agendas took advantage of that to create this horrible war. And, you know, a patriotic person has to stand with their country in a time of war, especially when Israel is, is constantly throwing rockets at, at us. So, which is was completely illegal and um, the United Nations should step into something like that, but they don't. Amazing, absolutely. I don't know how Israel, the people of Israel could go along with this. Israel aiding Al-Qaeda to try to take your country over. And I'm not anti-Israel either. Uh, it's just absolutely outrageous. Syrian girl, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, truly, truly amazing. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.